Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you all how you can make it so that in Godot when you're building your character and you have your animations down here that you can swap out all of your character animations from one sprite sheet to another simply with a drag and drop or just changing the texture image on the sprite sheet for your sprite node over here. Of course, there are some rules you have to follow in order to get this to work, but if you have everything set up correctly, obviously this can be a pretty convenient way to have one character set up, but with different sprite sheets for different character designs. So as I'll explain in a minute, the main thing is that when you're building the sprite sheet, the number of rows, frames, and their positions for each frame of animation have to be the same. So when you're building your animation, you use frame coordinates, which means you're going to be selecting one region from a sprite sheet for each frame of animation. So that's so that's why the frames and the sheets need to match up because you're not setting an image there. You're setting the position of that image on the sprite sheet. So if we look at the sprite node on this player character, then you'll see that there is an entire sprite sheet dragged and dropped into the texture here, but it's only rendering one frame here. And you set that up using the animation category down here, defining the number of rows and columns in your sprite sheet. So you'll need to figure out how many rows and columns there are. You can do that by counting or just using simple math if you know the size of each frame of your sheet. So once you've done that and you figure out, okay, there's 56 rows across and then there's 20 columns, then you can put that in. And now you'll be able to select each frame of animation based on the frame chords. And this is, of course, keyframeable, as most properties are in Godot. So when you're setting up your animations, you set the frame coordinates and you'll be able to see um, the texture that is going to render based on the current sheet. So we can look at all these animations and we can see that these are, if I click on each one, specific X and Y positions on that sprite sheet. So let me go ahead and open up one of these sprite sheets so you can see. So when we're talking about the X value, we're talking about how many positions over from the left. Uh, zero was zero is of course this first one. And that also applies vertically going down. So this is zero for Y, this is one for Y, two for Y. And if each row is its own animation, then that would be pretty easy to understand. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, you just need to look at your sprite sheet and know which frames of animation are for which animation. So the other thing that's really important when you're doing this is that there can't be any extra buffer space here at the bottom or on the side over here. So you're dividing your sprite sheet based on the rows and columns, which means that if there's extra padding on your sheet, it's going to actually mess up your frames. Since you're not specifically saying exactly which pixels are going to be making it up, but you're dividing it, but instead you're dividing the size of your sprite sheet by the number of rows and columns for horizontal and vertical. So if there was any extra space in your sheet, you need to trim that out before you actually use it. Uh, the other thing that's going to be really important here is that the size of your sheets match up. So if I was to look at this pre-made character here, you can double click on it and you can see 896 by 656. Um, that of course has that extra trailing space. So I need to trim that. And if we compare that to the original sheet, we can also see that this had already had the size trimmed. So the size of your sheets need to match up and the exact position of your animations are going to need to match up as well. But once you have all of that set up properly, you can just take one character sprite sheet, drag it in here, and it will immediately update for all of your animations. Now, it's not going to look quite perfect here because I need to trim that extra space. So if I take this pre-made character into Asaprite, which I'll go ahead and do now. And then I'll trim this bottom space. So let's go to, uh, let's see, Sprite Canvas Size. And then I click up here so that it's removing from the bottom and right and not equally from each side. I'll just trim this down to 640. We can see that that makes it so that these uh, frames perfectly line up against the edge there. And then I will save this back into Godot. We can click on our sheets and see that they line up again. And now what you'll notice is that the extra pixel that it may have moved the character up before is no longer there. So our animations are going to match up properly. So now that these sprite sheets line up, they have the same number of rows, columns, and the frames are in the same position. And uh, we go ahead and play the animation. Then the character should sit in the correct position for all of the frames now. So if I have the animation playing and I just swap in a different character, you can see uh, that they're going to be in exactly the same space, which is what we're looking for. And we can test with all of our animations. And this one doesn't loop, so got to manually reset it. 
But you can see how we have the same animation tracks, but we just swap in a different sprite sheet and it continues to work exactly as before. So that's basically it in a nutshell. For this to work, you need to animate your animations using frame coordinates instead of putting a specific texture image here. And then your sprite sheets need to match up exactly for the number of frames and the positions of which frame is for which animation. And then if that's the case, as long as your sprite sheets match up in the position, you'll be able to animate using frame coordinates in order to get this to work. So I've been Chris. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future Godot content.